perspectives to gain an insight into the alternative dimensions. I've always been fascinated by outer space and these paintings are ideally suited to be viewed in a zero gravity environment. I use a lot of different materials and techniques. Things that I find are melted, sawed up, filed, engraved and then nailed, screwed or glued on to the pre-painted surface. Light reflective and multicolored glow-in-the-dark pigments add another perspective. Stamps are another strand. They're a commentary on consumer culture and unsustainable media-driven materialism. The kind of stuff that pop artists such as Andy Warhol were alluding to. Hi, my name is Sharon O'Callaghan and I'm a visual artist based in Dublin. Among other subjects, I have always been drawn to painting people, and in particular children. There is something so fascinating about childhood, the simplicity and innocence. As adults, we can get so caught up in things in the past and future. Children live totally in the moment. They notice the small things and remind us too. They represent such hope and possibility for the future. My works based on childhood are inspired by observation and trying to capture the essence of a moment using composition, colour and light. The paintings become like a freeze frame or a snapshot of moments in time. I work mainly in oils and acrylics on canvas or wood panel. My style has evolved a lot over time, exploring different subjects and painting techniques, from palette knife to brush. My colour palette has developed too, from very muted soft marks to more defined blockier colours and brush strokes. My paintings generally have a couple of layers to them, a sketched underdrawing as the base, followed by the blocking in of colour and shape to create the overall image. I think my works have a nostalgic feel and represent things we can all relate to, transporting us back to times, reminding us of our own experiences, feelings, connections. I love how art can make us feel, think, engage, and how it's like a language all of its own, when sometimes it can convey things words just can't. My goal for the future is to be able to continue painting and bringing people connections through my work.
is Juliette Cadec, and I'm an Irish French painter based in Dublin. I'd like to consider myself a contemporary artist with a strong focus on figurative art. Throughout the body of work I've produced in the last number of years, there has been a recurring theme of mental illness. I do this by implementing a satirical approach through dark humour, because humour is often used as a coping mechanism. I feel it can make the work a lot more accessible and far less intimidating. I typically like to portray my subjects in a banal domestic setting. It's immediately recognisable for the viewer and can trigger a sense of familiarity with the subject. The space in which my subject is displayed is of paramount importance to the work. I really like when the sitter looks blasé and disinterested. It really echoes the feelings that I'm trying to portray. What I'm particularly interested in with oils is the luminosity and depth of skin tone that you can achieve with them. I think it really brings life and character to the paintings. Made in China. Hello, uh, my name is Spencer Glover and I'm a photographer from Dubai. This series of work we made during lockdown, I wanted to do some work that that reflected the situation we were in. Typically my, my images would deal with kind of the idea that we believe what we see in the photograph, you know, that the, the camera doesn't lie. So uh, I usually produce rather constructed images, getting people to act out things and so forth, and I, I couldn't do that. So I started looking at you know, what was around and uh, what I had available to me in the space I had. And one of the things I was reading was our, our changing relationship with China because of this pandemic, and France and Japan were offering grants to bring their production back away from China. Uh, it didn't have to be produced in France or in Japan, but they wanted their goods and their their manufactured goods, their health products, etc., to be made in other countries and not be so reliant on China. So I started looking at this idea of kind of, you know, made in China. And the phrase kind of made in China is pretty synonymous with, you know, cheap mass production, the, the reduction of national manufacturing. I decided to make these still lives of things that were only made in China, you know, that um, we see typically in deals or Euro giant. And so these kind of cheaply manufactured goods, you know, made in Chinese factories and imported into this country by, you know, by the truckload produce them as this kind of rich gilded trophies, you know, these kind of vanitas images that we, we see in 16th and 17th Dutch and Germanic paintings. Made in China. Hi, this is the artist Sherkin Tara from Baltimore, West Cork. I am a collage artist with a strong love of bright colours and animals. I like making quirky, zany artworks full of illuminating colours, using imagery from animals and birds and objects and nature to create almost dreamlike compositions. I usually begin my work with a theme. Past exhibitions have included the straw that broke the camel's back, earrings for the frog, the elephant in the room, the fox in the hen house, and a bull in the china shop. My current work is called Lockdown Frogs. My work is about shape, colour, light and space. I collect pre-existing imagery from everywhere. Magazines, newspapers, wrapping paper, nature books. Strong images that jump out at me. I am constantly cutting things out, either using them straight away or saving them for later. 
For the Lockdown Frog exhibition, I began focusing my work around reptiles and time running out for endangered species. I begin my painting the backgrounds in bright illuminating colours, usually working on three or four canvases at a time. With the luminosity of colour on the background, I start to play around with the imagery. Using the cutouts of animals, vegetables, flowers and frogs, I start to create dreamlike, almost alien compositions. It becomes like a puzzle or an exciting board game, moving the imagery around until they jump into the right place. I love having the artistic freedom of introducing a lot of humour in my work, making them wishy and amusing. I want the viewer to feel uplifted and elevated to a happy, positive, light-hearted, almost otherworldly place. Cheers. 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 My name is Felipe Chavez. I am an artist based in London, but I am originally from Colombia. I consider myself to be a contemporary figurative artist. I think I've developed a way to see and develop the body differently. I use Indian ink on paper. Indian ink is very similar to watercolour, but the difference is its density. When working with water, it sometimes repels it and it creates these beautiful textures. In this year, I've been creating and exploring the idea of what self-portraiture is and the difference between self-portraiture and self-voyeurism. What happens when the model and the artist are the same person? And what happens when the artist is a queer man and the model is an exposing gay man? What is that dynamic? Is there a pleasure? And is sexuality part of this dynamic? Sometimes in my work, I like to create this hidden narrative where the model has been exposing himself for hours, relentlessly, in this empty void of his own room. And you, the viewer, you, the voyeur, have been a fly on the wall, watching his every move. I want to create almost a world where the model, who is myself, has the liberty and the courage to explore his own body in privacy. I consider myself an artist that is inspired by exploration, by not understanding everything. So my work doesn't always have a direct message, but it allows the viewer to be invited into the process of exploring one's body. The way the hairs become so dark, so prominent, makes you understand how real that body is and makes you understand why it's important to feel human because there is more than what you think it's the way you feel the way your skin reacts with other skin the way your hand tastes art for me is to push oneself Art is a reflection of the artist's mind. And as a viewer, I am inviting you to be part of that process. My name is Rachel Kyo. I am a mother and an artist from Dublin. My painting is called Rise from the Struggle, which was titled by Sarah Kidney. In my painting, I used a variety of mixed media. The painting was inspired by a wonderful book that I read when I was a teenager called Sophie's World, written by Justine Garder. It is a mystery novel and a history of major philosophies that impacted thoughts and ideas throughout the ages. In Sophie's World, you see, philosophy is compared to a magic trick involving white rabbits. The famous magic trick when a rabbit is pulled out of an empty top hat 
as the audience stare in amazement, awe and wonder. In a way, the rabbit represents the world. Most adults hide deep in the rabbit's fur, making themselves comfortable with daily routines such as work, TV, eating and sleeping and are completely oblivious to the mystery surrounding them. Philosophers and children, however, stay right on the top of the rabbit's hair and embark on the perilous expedition to the outermost reaches of language and existence. They know that they only know one thing that's of value and that's that they know nothing at all. And as a result, they use their ignorance as a tool to ask questions about the mysteries of this world. My painting depicts a girl climbing out of a black hole, pulling herself up onto the yellow brick road, a quasi Alice in Wonderland. She's broken, but she's strong because to answer questions is easy, but to ask certain questions can get you into a lot of trouble. If you look closely, you can see the shadow of the rabbit in the hole. So this painting represents a call to wonder and to ask the right questions, to strip ourselves of what we think we know or of what others have told us to be true. It is a painting of rebellion and a revolt towards conformity because freedom is only really found in choosing to be a rebel. Thank you, Dino, for having me here as a guest. Uh, my name is Terrence Clemens. I am one half of the documentary Game Face. Game Face was a documentary that I came out in college with um, at the age of around 25. Um, I was struggling with my sexuality, um, not really struggling with the sports world. Um, and a friend came to me at the time, his name was Michael Thomas, and he asked me to uh, participate in the uh, documentary Game Face and be one part of a um, subject, I guess, subject of the matter. Um, I took on the role and in that movie um, I came out and uh, went on into life. I was raised by my great grandmother. Um, her name was Lurleen Marie Parrott and she was 67 years old at the time. My mother decided to uh, let my grandmother take care of me because my mother was young at the time. And so I'm at the stage now to where I'm going back and I'm actually reaching out to people that I care about and I'm reconnecting with. The NGBA, um, it's a big part of my life. It's an organization, the National Gay Basketball Association. Um, it's ran by the director, Mark Chambers. Um, the athletes travel around. We travel once every three months to different states, different locations. And we play basketball. Um, we have tournaments all weekend. Yeah, we just break bread with each other and have a lot of fun. And that's a little bit about the NGBA. It's a very uh, unique basketball organization. And we're even opening up now to where we have people come in and visit. Um, so you can actually come in and sit down and see the game. So I'm working on a little film project, a new documentary of what am I doing with my life and the struggles, the ups and downs of like coming out as an LGBT athlete. And I hope you guys enjoy the gallery.